Welcome to the Belgrade uh, International Meeting of Writers, to the conference Words Connect Continents. The conference Words uh, Connect Continents has been organized by uh, Society for Culture, Art and International Cooperation, Alligat. Uh, within Alligat there is a Book and Travel Museum, where we are located now, and also Museum of Serbian Literature. Uh, the conference has been organized within the International Belgrade Meeting of Writers that is organized by the Association of Writers of Serbia. Of course, all the writers are equally welcome. We are very proud to uh, be able to showcase poetry from Bangladesh, from Indonesia, Maldives, Nigeria, Mali, as I said, from five continents. Please enjoy. Uh, من أجل أن نتبادل المحبة عبر الكتاب والكتابة النص الأدبي هو الذي يجمعنا أنا إسماعيل إبرير روائي وشاعر من الجزائر أسعد بأن أقرأ لكم مقطع أولا من نص العاشقان الخجولان متاهة الكائن الحجري المعاصر ثم سأحدثكم قليلا عن إسماعيل إبرير تسلحت طوال سنوات بيقين لهذا فأنا أمام الأسئلة بقوة صخرة قديمة لم أتصور أني سأعترف يوما بأن الذي واجهت به الدنيا كان شظايا وهم كبير وفي اللحظة اليائسة الكبرى قررت أن أجمع الشظايا أعيد تشكيلها وأحصل على صورة واضحة لوهمي العظيم لأجل هذا اخترت الجلوس كل يوم في حديقة سرية أسفل شارع أنوار وإطلاق العنان لصوت أغني مطولا وفي أثناء ذلك حصل أن مرت دعسوقة حزينة أمامي توقفت برهة تصغي إلى صوت الحزين ولم أرى وجهها أو أتمثل ملامحها حتى أني لم أفكر يوما في لقاء دعسوقة لكن شكلها واستدارة ظهرها وانحناءتها تؤكد أن المسكينة فطر قلبها وهي في حدود الحزن الأعظم الذي انتهك قواها أردت أن أتوقف عن الغناء حين رأيتها تمضي بخطى كثيرة لكن خاطرا ما صوب لي الفكرة فرحت أرخي صوتي وأمطط الأغنية لتكون على إيقاع حزنها وهكذا نسيت حزني ووجدتني أرعى حزن الدعسوقة دون أن أنتبه إلى مسافة الزمن بيننا كنا كائنين هشين التقيا في حديقة سرية حديقة تناور الناس فلا تكاد ترى كان الزمن ثقيلا ومحملا باللا جدوى ما جعلني أشعر أن الصوت الذي يغني هو لشخص آخر هو حالة انسلخت مني لتكون واجهة لي هل كنت في وضع نفسي وعقلي خطر لأعتقد هذا سرت على صفة الدعسوقة أمضي في الحديقة بخطى مثقلة محني الظهر معقوف العنق ولقد هالني العذاب الذي تعيشه تلك الحشرة رغم ألوانها ولم أتمكن من اكتشاف سببه لأن السماء انتبهت للحديقة وألقت سيلا هادرا من الماء وكنت أرفع رأسي لأمحو أي لون قد يعكر تعاستي وأواجه المطر بوجه صريح الحزن وقد توقف الشخص الذي تركته يغني في مرحلة ما عن الغناء فلم أعد أصغي له واكتفيت بصوت المطر وبوجه الماء يتفتت على وجهي قطعا عندما هممت بالوقوف أشحت بعيني إلى أرض الحديقة لأرى وضع الدعسوقة لكنني لم أعثر عليها فتشت مطولا فتشت زمنا يعتبر في وعي الدعسوقة دهرا كاملا دون أثر أتكون قد غرقت وجرفتها سيول المطر التي تمضي بين شقوق أرض الحديقة المهيئة لمشاة لا يجئون ربما انتهى عذابها فجأة فطارت إلى شجرة واستوطنت ورقة واسعة تنعم فيها بحياة طويلة وفرح كبير جعلتني الدعسوقة أتضاعف تعاسة وجعلت خوفي من الخطوة القادمة أكبر جلست على كرسي الحديقة الحديدي وقد تراجع المطر الفجائي كأنه ينسحب بحذر ومكثت كأني مهزوم لا يملك خطابا أعتقد أن رسالتي إلى كتاب العالم تترخص من هذا النص الذي يتحدث عن خيبة الإنسان المعاصر 
في خياراته كلها فهو دائما يقف مستغربا ومنبهرا من إنسان حجري ترك نقشا حجريا على الصخور ويتساءل كيف أمكن الإنسان أن يفعل هذا متنكرا لما وصل إليه من إنجازات وما أبدعه خلال العصور كلها الإنسان اليوم يعيش مأزقا إنسانيا مأزقا في فلسفته وفي وجوده أعتقد أن الحب هو ما يجمع الإنسانية جمعاء ولنترجم هذا الحب فمن الضروري أن نقرأه عبر الأدب ومن الضروري أن يكون الأدب موجودا في حياتنا فوناط فوناط ذي التغيير قليل وانتي يتقدارا استهزان ذي سلاحين ذي السرد شديعان ينوات شوق تركير ازداد سنائي في زبعا وهي في وشو يسرحين سكفة سنة سنياتنا لا في زغوالة يسفن لا في ذورير لا في غزة لا سحارني وسيغان لا لبحان منزع ينتي أمرت ذا قدو ذي الثمات الدخان الشبحو ذي قلت نوعو ذي نشم ذي تومذان كل ما يدي يحضر ونقدو ويرغام وماذا غيلان يسفن لغة مرة سنجري وذي زوليغا وذي قيم ذي سن كرام ولا ذي سن من هجرا ماذي ذغار من سن السام سوى كرام منت الصيادة زيك نحمل يسن ذهان نعاش الساور نطمع في حل ذي الصنار ذي فدود ولاش نغمة في اللب الغفل قضمع كرا ذي القراش تجوار عندها نتقيل عمد نفكان ثنتي ثمس في الزيكزو تغفين تضيل الساور ذي قيم السيكس الضرور ثنتي ثين ألم ما سيس نبقس نسيس ديل دخل البخان نطقيل زدات تبورد مد حضرم كثيرا من السن غير شحال تارفوث اثو النار نارني لغفينام اقشيش هالكاس تنطوث وكثان غورنا غوا فراس وكثان غورنا غوا فراس هاني الفضان وفان دام كان نحرص تزدك ذايين لا خامس ديوغران فحجب غفية مدانا نويدي يسلو خوخ نزقان مادي هو بوافو يما لدكيرا يلان ثفو شيطان دما ثرفو سيقني في الصواضيفن انت جمع كرا دثيرنو ازدا فيك في زر وعيفا وما لبحر ما يهول يتخبو لكي ليلان كل شي ندي شبل اتغيل الدلع بيز دي هوان مي يرسالك دي مل ادل في عيلك يركان في زيت يكو دي زان ازقان يدنا غضي رفيقا فالزغري وين دي امكان احلي الويت مع الجثا الفحا دي الامكان الجفاد دي وكيوان ويستهزان دي فو الناط ذي نغاك ويستهزا ايا مذان مثعون ضد تسرفتي من نغنغزا ايا وذن فرس يلدمار وذن ديك دي منزا ان فرس ازدت بورث ذوان دا يكون التيدير ابنك الوياك ستمورث اسيف ذيال الفير اذار في زيت مدورث يكارث مورا مدني فرير اذار في زيت مدورث يكارث مورا ابني فرير A poem from Masudul Haq, Bangladesh. Travel. From the writing table, the eyes awoke at midnight. A scattered moon coming to the window takes bread. Pat black cat gets vanished in the dark. Getting drenched into super moon, you became moon. I travel to the land of the moon. Hola, eu sou Beatriz Mascarenhas. Eu sou uma escritora amazonense do Brasil. E eu comecei a escrever desde muito pequena. Quando eu era pequena, eu pegava meus livros, eu pegava meus papéis, eu comecei a criar histórias devagarzinho, histórias que, que me contemplavam de alguma forma, histórias que eu poderia, através delas, dizer o que eu estava sentindo, como eu me sentia, como é que eu via o mundo. E eu cresci assim, sob grande influência dos meus pais, me incentivaram desde muito cedo a entrar na literatura. Eu cresci criando histórias e eu acho que criar histórias é uma forma de eu mostrar para as pessoas um pouco da minha visão de mundo, como é que se relaciono, como é que eu me relaciono com o mundo, como é que eu vejo o mundo, o que é que o mundo significa para mim. É, eu participei de algumas antologias literárias, né, é, desde 2012, desde quando eu tinha 16 anos e e recentemente eu publiquei um livro chamado Bicho no Mali, né, o país africano, e na França. É, foi muito importante para mim esse passo, porque 
olhando para trás toda a minha trajetória, tudo que eu já passei na minha vida, tudo que eu já vivi, é, através do livro Bicho, eu pude contar um pouco a história da minha família. Quem é a minha família? Quem sou eu? Por que eu sou como eu sou? E quem é o Brasil nesse contexto gigantesco e mundial é, né, de países extremamente mais privilegiados, muito mais tocando muito mais privilégios mesmo. Quem é o Brasil nessa figura? Quem é o Brasil hoje? E o que o Brasil significa para mim? É, bicho fala muito disso. Bicho é a minha alma. Mas antes disso, eu fiz alguns trabalhos. Eu tinha um blog chamado Por Dedos Tortos, pelo fato de eu ter dedos tortos. E eu escrevi esse blog onde eu publicava poemas diários. Mais tarde, esse blog virou um livro chamado Por Dedos Tortos e que ainda não foi publicado e eu tenho trabalhado assim sempre voltando para voltando meus olhos para algo que me faça me sentir bem algo que me faça me sentir é, útil para o mundo sabe de alguma forma que eu possa dar para as pessoas um olhar novo sobre todas as coisas é, um olhar único um olhar meu e a partir do meu olhar deixar elas ter o olhar delas também é, ano passado eu publiquei uma série de mini contos LGBT é, a mais né? Eu como uma mulher bissexual é, Achei muito importante tocar nesse tema Visto que o Brasil é o país que mais mata pessoas é, LGBT do mundo e, e fiz uma série de mini contos Cada mini conto falava de uma pessoa diferente E recentemente também eu virei roteirista dos estúdios Maurício de Souza Produções Que são os estúdios que lançam a revista na Turma da Mônica, no Brasil. E isso me fez muito feliz. Para mim, literatura escrita é vida. É o modo como eu falo com as pessoas, como eu me comunico, como eu existo, como eu me faço ser lembrada até então, até o momento em que eu não mais existi. Eu vou ler para vocês um trecho de Bicho. O primeiro trecho de Bicho, o livro que publiquei ano passado no Mário. Dizem bom dia aos azarados, dizem bom dia aos maquiados, dizem bom dia aos informados. Os que não têm voz, calam-se. Escrevo bom dia ainda que eu não acorde, ainda que me faltem garras presas ao chão. Escrevo aquilo que de alguém foi roubado, na garganta de voz eu como meu pão. Em cada canto há uma outra face, algumas delas têm o meu nariz, outras têm os meus cabelos. Mas todas têm o um peso nos olhos, feito corvas. O peso da história, de cada memória, é maior que a tinta, que o papel, que o mundo e mais nada, além do infinito tudo. Há um peso naquele canto me olhando. O peso está encolhido, murmurando. Se finge não vê-lo, sei que ele me vê e diz, olha esse bicho aqui. As minhas cores não me escondem. Nesse outono de cores fracas em terra branca de fronte oca. Pois não há nada que me esconda de bicho estranho igual a mim. Escrevo porque me falta tambor. Samba só existe no bafo quente. Busco em mim meu próprio sabor. Mas não encontro som algum. Só o cheiro de carne congelada que tem toda essa gente. Não deveriam ser vistos como bicho, nem bichos que são comidos por gente. Nem gente que é comida por todos, nem todos que morrem por não comer. Nem alguns bichos, nem todos os bichos, nem eu. Muito obrigada pelo tempo de vocês. E eu só queria dizer que, que a literatura vive e a poesia pulsa todos os dias dentro de cada um de nós. Olá! Sou Márcia Cambeba, sou do povo Mágoa Cambeba, poeta, escritora, ativista da causa indígena e ambiental. E vou recitar do livro O Lugar do Saber Ancestral, o poema O Tempo do Clima. E houve um tempo em que dançavam as borboletas. Na grama verde pousavam para descansar e ouvir o canto do vento ecoar. Houve um tempo em que o sol brilhava mais forte, clareando o caminho com paz e bem. A maturecia o fruto não prejudicava ninguém. Houve um tempo em que a terra, no seu esplendor, alimentava 
O mundo com alegria e amor, dela brotava planta, tinha respeito e valor. Houve um tempo em que a lua virava na iá e o sol se escondia para essa dama brilhar. Na noite escura ela chamava as encantarias protetoras da mata, rio e mar. Mas o homem, filho da terra, que por ela foi moldado, escravizado na arrogância, dinheiro, o um pecado, secou o rio, retalhou a terra, deixou tudo mudado. Espantou os animais, enganou os encantados, arrancou essa malmeira e os pássaros desesperados procuraram uma morada, só acharam descampado. O sol ficou furioso, a pele fez arder, a lua entristecida no eclipse se escondeu. A água não teve pena de quem dela se esqueceu. Deixou de correr em uma barragem, envelheceu. A inteligência humana não parou de atacar. A queimada e a derrubada afetaram até o ar. Respirar é um problema, a fumaça não vai parar. O clima foi alterado, meu rio mudou de rumo, minha roça secou no verão, perdi até meu fumo, a aldeia não viu mais peixe, cadê o pirabutão? A macaxeira não criou raiz, meu rio virou sertão, da fonte que eu bebia restou a recordação, sinto o cheiro de poluição envenenando a nação. Para ajudar o clima, precisamos do tempo. Só o velho ancião pode controlar a máquina da destruição. Truca da Tátila Sonar. Sam Nassu Anassara Kunar, Nereo Susseveki e Kamia Sare Sessuzit. Dama ou Rassuni Truca Pamsen e Pacusu, Siminopo. Sinimini Tusava Truca Pissu Kava e Pissopa de Tsapurutu. Nipitoka Kra Kra. E Makaru e macaco tu ruca a tarde mais sorte. Tu ruca a um nevia a sete anos e não me apareceu nem o capaz de pão. O capia a tarde mais cano e lhe suta me dava na e que eu me agachei o. Tanto me não 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 me Nasu, e caruxo na rara, e de cima de rapa, que não capia, e que o seripo. Tana, vamos, não eu te sei tuapo, sam na sub, e na sava o capo, não capia, tana, ama, truga, não tato, de tisa a capapo. Não me carua para anna, mas suria satana, suria sin naga, sam na sulu, e na sava, da eshemi, tocana, a da quemara. Anna me ama na lengira, terra simaro, e minuto pinga te passar a rosuni. Nereu punga toca a simanginini e coera do passe sega. Turua Catitu me nipiri a sarosumi o capelapo. Turua marceria toca a feliz a mini, Susan Napo, a sulu camera suni. Mera para o tacara e pisse pissevets. E piaço que raso. Truca de nada a nem hipo. O sol é sessão e é mais a tirar o ato. Da inuit a topo. Minho chitina raso em a chipa, pisu safi a put a putit esta e dosso e ping mosta. Vale só nisani e casa só nisani e casi sessui. O da casina em irego, da malha o tome que não se nasce. Truca a chica tu sai e ting. Sam Nassu e Nassava não capia a sua reação e não se sentiu se tudo capa. A matasma se suma a nada na rumira que nasou. Sua reação não. E não se sente bem. Tudo a agora casa o homem está na nega na pior tofu. Daqui tudo a tu não se sente nem se suma a nada não. E não se sente que se nem tu não se sente bem. O homem está na reação não não capia capa e só nessa. Se o samic e piaço, e na cor, a crasso e só na top do nio de sabapo, da culpa e só que se sasa vai, sam massu e na sala da uma sussunarega, tunisuta da massa. Druca e piaço mut e mute se vai, se soma anna e na só figura o nio crasso sussa, da na mi sam massu e na sala da piuma sara. Nunca piacat e piaço, e na cor, e meroni crat e só na top. Kumini kerja kerja apa ye sila nak kisah cikya tahun ah ini ya ius kafe yang naik sama pun. Singa nak 
Durup kat nara rat o kari vaga mal atach ma son lok tu nama sima. Durup kat nara rat minislu. Islu kava ni chakka kapu. Surup surup paruk. Surup paruk. Kama chi sabuto to chakka pu. Kama chi sumi asara ka. Immin nuslu kima pu. Duru asli masiria nikingira. Atatami umesieni isiya. Atatami sama sub ana sava ta pe kusuta belinya suana ramid esu kanapa. Sokuti sokuta ngi tutut ato fisa ngi tutut imma kote ta su tu su misigi sima go. Ta kua du atatami turuak igara kut irumut maksa ha. Isu kava ni apu mi to kosu ni maksa pa. Nuka pia ku mi ha. Asan isu ni sokusuk kanwa pa. Turuk kat nara nga ta turuk ak sinitok isi huwa sinak pa. Ek kasa at saka nga nga misakam nuk nungin ni sa ta tunga nuk isi ha. Nuka piya asu sinak nga kami. Nuka ta kan ngui la asu ni tutsip pa. Nuka piya asa suma ang nani na lungin ni tok sa mga sub at nasawa ta tok ka ga. Nano pang siyo chini ek suhu sinip. Turu ka pa 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 pesu. Turu ka pa ngayon kawe kulang ato ka suci inimi ka fisu. Aliyo ka tuka sa chika ruci. Ta ma luci tu sa arak pa. Turu ka pesu il isu kawa ni sa kapa rutu. Ta ma luci. Suru pa rung ma chira muki di ang pur. Tu pa ka at acha mi ta ma turu ka dik anak sa chika sa te kupur. Iga ra sira ta ka na rutu na ngopo. Surup perusua siuna, turut kapan ayok kau berpulang tuju asal pesis tuju in minit nak kupur. Ada waktu kasar nak nuan nasau tak tak. Tahu cina nak turut waktu tua ngami turut kau berpulang tu kasih masuk. Turut kapan ayah pak aku pak ikhlas tu ni tu. Ikhlas nuan ada waktu kasar tuju sana ya sulit ikhlas si masuk. Turut kapan ayah nak aku pak eh. Ani si sapa ko irak ta nakata ma turunga kaksi isok turuk kap aya irang yupa. Ang nga na, turunga ang nga rami sa minupiya nga po. Itsi kami, tesi tsapo, inga na ato si retano pa kaya sa kami. Tesi ni turuk kap ang iso kachito pesub o karo chirak pa. Gamat, at si sengira chit, ako ang nga ranin ni ato kaysa chit. Kisimilo chit ang nga laso sa ho chit. Nerungin lesi atau nak tu saya ruang itu, tetapi saya iman atau nak tahu si lelu si tu ku kisi ya ayah pasu. Turun aku cici aku senang waktu kita masih pingin sabtu sama ikhwan yang saya sebut cici. Turun aku kamu nak kisi saya tu tu mesti ya cini wo turun kesu nara gata tu nyusa aku masih mewaru asal tu. Ipiasub ang agkuwa kap iluwa ni po kirad isang nakpo. Tulog kap maksiri at tulog at saslinga ni masak pa meron sa harap suguro. Pagaya fis sa siyusak at ang suguro yun sa chikong isa kang samyo chikus sa baka. Dahil na minasas sumaang na o nisa baka ha ha ka ka. Nano, tulog at unga si soswan ni chimigo. Dahil masunit nano si kumi iman mo akato tekuwa. Kimu ning waru nano eru ria suang mo kaki wo turu wak eru ame teku saka ho mesu ni kanisat topo. Nano kacima cheru ni iresi wo turu kasa su cingin ni ni kureke rami yu kanisat kipo. Aha nano nasu umata sikumina ikuma sakto sesuma am nano tunyu kiu. Da nami am na ta to son na kasan na kasima wo uma chisu. Kah mak figu mapa mana umat kami ngamu sesuma amna teru cikup pau ikisa isi garu ama pizza nago disepu isi garu ama pizza nago disepu dah ama okasuniru nenu turuk kat isi garu apa apa cipa turuk kamu turuk kak imamu nak kacil kamu cikau si turuk kak imamu tuli misafu cikau si u sape minik si rana mu pacipa Kena menurut aku tu, ini sangat imut nak kanu kapa, anak sahul suami tu, tu luak anis sepo, cikarus 
fjúlluk safanu miljúni. Hallo illit. Ek ana uiro. Sessuma anna ta pissa. Iruani no na sommi. Uma suttama setta kusinna va. Uma suttama mi uma nas uma nas sappata uiro atoffi sakatsippa. Tama okarthuniru. Sika yulliu turuak subogu yusoppa kummu imma kavani. Tessani nettoari naapi. An exile. It is a bus we board our days. The horses of exiles between its seats. At the ending tracks of life, the bus didn't take us where we wanted. And when we had to leave it by the end of the night, we had to look for another bus. As our graveyards spread between the edges of the oceans. Which woman? Which woman will sacrifice us at the first scene, but the one whom we gifted our life? Which house will leave us at the day of floods but the one we built on our shoulders. Which road will kick us at the first crossroad, but the ways we paved for others? Which squares will witness us hanged with no guilt, but the square that we put our statues in? Which distance shall kill us but those spaces between poems. A cloud. I am dreaming of a cloud that has purified its drops to wit me. I am the forgotten flower in the desert. A cloud that is thrown by a planet away from the galaxies of gods. Its clean blood has no bodies from the earth. Polluted with pieces of dead and snakes of blood. A cloud that is lonely and exiled as much as I am. It doesn't check my ID before kissing me. The eyes are our skies. The space is our place a cloud of, or a painting on a getting completed, I became its last touch. Ashraf Abu Yazid, Egypt. The title of my poem is Dot of Light. Life is not easy. Things always change. How can I compete in this world full of lies now that you're gone it seems it's hard to go on i lost all the love that you've given me in my life it's a feeling you want to escape when you're down and you don't feel great i'm ashamed and i can't face the reality in front of me what I'm feeling now is an emotional violence, a feeling of fear, and chances are low, so you just care less. But a dot of light is seen from afar. It goes clearer and clearer as I walk in the dark. I've reached the depth of darkness, and there's no way but to turn. So I'm still breathing, and my eyes are still seeing the dot of light that is clearing my way bit by bit. As I look back, it's all pitch black, 
And I told myself, I've been there. But now it's time to continue my path to that light, small dot. I started to gain strength after resting long in the dark. I began running on that path of light. Got so excited because it's been a long night. I did a long jump and I landed on my head. It hurts, but I'm alive. I smiled and started to notice. So this is life. Thank you very much. My name is Daniel John T. Saikon. So the title of my poem is Dot of Light. Thank you very much. Ellerigo Namaskara. Good day, everybody. I'm Dr. Reshma Ramesh, bilingual poet writing in English and Canada. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Victor Lazik, President of Society for Culture, Art, and International Cooperation, Adligad. Book and Travel Museum, Museum of Serbian Literature. I'm very honored to be in this August company in the event, Words Across Continents. The pandemic has been very hard and very difficult for all of us. Millions of people here, especially here in India, have lost their lives and have been pushed into poverty. In these difficult times, the only thing to look is for hope and the best way is through art. Art, music, poetry, literature. And as a doctor, it has been very difficult mentally and physically for me to keep on doing what I do and also to keep the other patients, family and myself safe. And um, it, it has been very tiring times. So I'm very happy to be here and my first poem is written for my grandfather whom I lost a couple of years back and this poem is for him. It's called Things That He Left Behind. My grandfather has left behind falling parijatas with orange stems, a courtyard that opens like the world with things to be discovered, yet familiar like a lover's skin. A living room where light flows like a river every morning, touching the banks of my grandmother's aching feet. He has left behind mogras that lean towards the sun and speak a language of togetherness. Mango trees that drop fruits into anyone's hands who open their palms into prayers. Broken tiles where a weaver bird in the roof will build her home. Slithering bookworms dwelling in musty pages with stories that long for closure. He has left behind my grandmother in a sulking room with open windows that draws broken things from the sea to fill her bosom with heaviness of an empty house and all the things that he has left behind. Thank you. Namaskar. This is Sangjukta Dasgupta. Thank you for the opportunity. I will read two poems. The first from my fifth book of poems, Lakshmi Unbound, and I will read the title poem, Lakshmi Unbound. Don't, don't call me Lakshmi. I can't ever be Lakshmi. I want to fly kites. I want to climb trees. I want to read and write. I want to sing and dance. I want to climb mountains. I want to swim in the seas. I want to do what I like, whenever I like. I want to be mad, I want to be bad. I can't be in corners of four wall spaces. I can't be in eddies, I want to flow in the mainstream. I want to be in whirlpools, I want to roam and run. I want to eat fruits from trees. I want to drink to the last drop the juice of grapes. 
I want to cook for myself. I want to dream. I want to pace the rainbow arch in a spectacular hallucination. I can't be Lakshmi. I will ever fail this endurance test. I have to speak. I have to cry. I have to scream. I have to laugh. I have to swim in rivers. I cannot swim in pools. I want to fly like an eagle. I want to glide like a feather. I will forever fail this endurance test. I have flung off the sellotape on my lips. I will sing the freedom song. I may not be Lakshmi, but I am. I just can't be Lakshmi. I have to break the silence. My wealth is not jewels. My wealth is my gypsy spirit. I can't be Lakshmi. I can't be good, sane, silent Lakshmi. I can't be the angel in someone else's house. I don't want to be a disembodied spirit. I don't want to be Lakshmi. I am a Lakshmi. Trap me if you can. My second poem is taken from my sixth book of poems, uh, Sita's Sisters, and it is titled Dhoti Dance, inspired by Lungi Dance, which is a very popular song in a film, which is even more popular, the film Chennai Express, Dhoti Dance. Those were the days when it was not about twirling the moustache. It was not about dancing in nightclubs. It was not ab about challenging the choreographer. It was not about grabbing the chance, chance, chance to dance, 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 the lungi dance. There were no music and drums as the dhotis and saris danced down the streets to face the imperial rod of power. Soldiers striped their backs, soldiers handcuffed them, but they sat like boulders. It was a dance of Satyagraha. It was a dance of non-violent non-cooperation that shook the foundations of the British Raj. The frail old man in a dhoti led the British such a dance that their pantaloons and pajamas slipped off as they pranced and danced. It was not chance pe dance, it was the determined dhoti dance. The youthful old man had choreographed the freedom dance. A nation danced to his tune, a nation danced towards freedom as Mohandas. Karamchand Gandhi, the frail old man in a Capri dhoti, led the dhoti dance. Thank you. Barangali telah kuseka namamu dengan sol sepatu. Seperti dalam perang yang lalu kau seka namaku. Barangkali kau telah menyeka bukan namaku. Barangkali aku telah menyeka bukan namamu. Barangkali kita malah tak pernah di sini. Hanya hutan jauh di selatan. Hujan pagi. Afterward. Begitulah kita mesti mengalah. Akhirnya langit itu hanya satu. Musim tak bisa lebih. Kota memaku pintu. Kini anak-anak dan lalat-lalat melakukan gumam untuk tarian bayang-bayang di tengah pasar Palawija dan Kembang Kering. Meskipun hari malam dan subuh masih jauh. Uap bersusun bersama uap. Cahaya terlambat Sejuta bersin tak terdengar oleh empat juta bahana. 
dulu ada sisa taman di mana kita berdekapan. Tapi kenapa kini kutemukan alamatku pada terompah itu, aku tak tahu. Kenapa kutemukan nomormu pada sebuah ruang tamu, aku juga tak tahu. Kurasa kita masih seperti dulu, tapi udara membekas tujuh jejak pada paruku. Mengapa bertanya masih adakah warna di luar sana? Ya, memang pantai masih ada. Kadang aku bangun pagi-pagi dan melihat adakah laut masih mengirimkan ombak kuaknya kemari. Dan di tepi ini, buih masih merayap putih kembali dan merayap lagi. Kita tak pernah tahu apa yang mereka cari. Kadang camar-camar berkejaran terbang dengan paruh mengerang. Lalu, lalu hilang. Dan kita lihat separuh matahari, separuh bayang-bayang, separuh ufuk yang hitam. Memang tak banyak lagi yang bisa dikatakan. Tapi seandainya semalam bersih saja bulan, enteng dan segar, seandainya awan sempat berkisar, seandainya engkau utuh di tubuhku dan bisa kulihat sempurna liukmu di cermin itu, dan seluruh angkasa lebih acuh kepada kita, sungguh, mimpi akan cukup. Kita akan punya dalih. Aku akan membujukmu. Akan kutawarkan bunyi, tanda seru, dan sesi yang lain dari matahari itu. Sebab kini tinggal satu soal. Bagaimana menunggu, tak ada sesal. Sebab, Kalaupun esok kita memang harus enyah, aku tahu seekor burung akan menyongsong kita dari timur laut dan memuntahkan darah. Lalu hujan akan turun, amis. Tahukah kau orang-orang tua kita telah mengenali syarat itu? Ketika mereka duduk tegak atas pelana untuk menaklukkan seluruh berantara, mereka sebenarnya pun gemetar. pada Sang Gurdi, dan berkata, begitulah kau mengakhiri kami. Tapi mereka tetap pergi. Ah, oh, kita tak punya mantara lagi. Esok akan kututup kelambu ketika debu dan cahaya membentuk yang lala di arah kiblat di depan kita. Kau tahu pasti apa yang menanti di sana. Hamburger Wak, kau kunyah diriku seperti hambur, seperti hambur. Barangkali kamu seekor macan, karnivora, dilindungi undang-undang. Dalam mulutmu yang mengunyah, aku merasa kesepian. Ku cari cinta di dalamnya, tapi hanya ku dengar bunyi mesin hitung yang berdelik, menghitung mimpi tanpa perasaan. Aku merayap di antara daun selada, saus tomat, dan bawang bombay yang hancur luluh meneteskan penderitaan. Hup, hup! Ku dengar suara mendambakan pertolongan. Aku meloncat-loncat di antara lidahmu yang bergoyang keenakan. Barangkali itu suara lembu yang disembelih dan ya sekarat meregang-regang. dikuliti dan diambil dagingnya untuk membuat hamburger yang dipersembahkan bagi peradaban. Kau kunyah diriku seperti hamburger, seperti hamburger. Ya. Hamburger itu, sebetulnya mulutmu tak cukup untuk hamburger itu, tapi kau memaksanya. Kau lupa. Hamburger itu lebih besar dari tempe, lebih besar dari tahu, dan lebih besar pula dari lingkau babat stasiun Tawang, Semarang. Sebetulnya mulutmu tidak cukup untuk hamburger itu. Kau sudah menganga selebar-lebarnya, mendorong masuk sekeras-kerasnya, tapi apa daya mulutmu cuma mulut Indonesia. Namun kau tetap saja memaksa sampai memanggil bulldozer segala. Padahal hamburger itu lebih besar dari penua Amerika. 
sebetulnya mulutmu tidak cukup untuk hamburger itu. Tapi mengapa kau tetap saja memaksanya? Kau telah menelan sepotong tempe, telah menelan sebagul intan, telah menelan berhektar-hektar sawah dan tanah, telah menelan perkampungan, telah menelan supermarket, telah menelan gedung-gedung, telah menelan jalan tol, telah menelan gunung, telah menelan pulau, telah menelan langit, laut, dan hutan-hutan yang terbakar. Sebetulnya sungguh mati, mulutmu tidak cukup untuk hamburger itu, tidak cukup untuk hamburger itu. COVID-19. نام صحبتم رو از نام یکی از رمان های جانشتاین بک وام گرفتم سلطنت کوتاه پیتن چهارم اما سلطنت کوتاه کووید 19 هم سلطنتی است که در برخی کشورها کوتاه بود حدود یک سال و در برخی کشورها زمان بلندتری داشت دو سال و در برخی از اقلیم ها و کشورهای دیگر همچنان نیز ادامه دارد این سلطنت کوتاه در نوع مواجهه حکمرانان رنگ و بوی متفاوتی داشت اما در نوع اقتلاع انسان هیچ تفاوتی نداشت تفاوتی میان فقیر و غنی جهان اول و جهان دوم و جهان سوم چپ و راست قاره و قاره های مختلف قاره آسیا و قاره اروپا در نوع ابتلا تفاوتی وجود نداشت جانشتاین بک از موشها و آدمها تا خوشه های خشم همواره با جهانی جدی خشک که به سختی تغییر می کرد روبرو بود اما آن هنگام که به رمان سلطنت کوتاه پیتن چهارم رسید تغییراتی در نگاه او به جهان پیدا شد اگر از, م... اگر از من بپرسید فارغ از فارغ از نگاه سیاسی، فارغ از نگاه های تمدنی، اتفاق مهم در سلطنت کوتاه پیتن چهارم این بود که نگاه جانشتاین بک از یک نگاه خشک به زندگی به نگاهی تبدیل شد که می توانست با زندگی شوخی بکند. سلطنت کوتاه پیتن چهارم شروع نگاه تازه ای بود در جانشتاین بک. نگاهی که می توانست با پیچیده ترین بروزات زندگی شوخی بکند آیا سلطنت کوتاه کووید 19 هم با ما و با نگاه ما نیز چنین بازی خواهد نمود این سوال اصلی من است جانشتاین بک بعد از سلطنت کوتاه پیتن شهارم نوشته های زیادی ازش به جا نموند رمان های زیادی ننوشت که متوجه بشیم منظور او منظور کامل او از شوخی با زندگی چیست آیا ما نیز بعد از سلطنت کوتاه کووید 19 هم فرصت خواهیم داشت تا نگاه های تازه ای به پیرامون خود داشته باشیم از موش ها و آدم ها گفتم موش ها جای دیگری نیز به رمان های فراگیر بشری وارد شدند مثلا در طاعون آلبر کامو طاعون البته در قرآن الجزایر قصه خود را برای ما واگو می کند موش هایی که روزنامه های شهر قرآن هرگز حاضر نشدند مرگ آنها را خبری بدانند و برای مخاطبان خود خبر مرگ موش را به عنوان پیش قراول خبر طاعون ابراز کنند اما آیا در زمان نگاشته شدن طاعون موضوع تاون موضوع روز فراگیر و همگیر جامعه جهانی بود نه اینگونه نبود آیا وقتی کوری ساراماگو نوشته شد آن حاله سفید در چشمان تک تک مخاطبان در جهان یک تجربه مشترک زیسته بود نه کوری در بی زمان و بی مکان اتفاق افتاد زمان و مکان آلبر کامو در تا اون نیز زمان و مکانی نبود که همه مردم از آن به عنوان یک تجربه مشترک نام ببرند به گمان من آنچه اهمیت دارد این است که مطمئن باشیم هرگز 
از کووید 19 هم و از سلطنت کوتاه کووید 19 هم نباید نباید انتظار داشته باشیم تا رومانی مثل کوروش و مثل تاون از خاکستر او به در آید هرگز چنین رومانی از کووید 19 هم نوشته نخواهد شد تجربه مشترکی که همه ابناع بشر فارغ از ملیت فارغ از سطح اقتصادی فارغ از سطح تحصیلی با آن به یک شکل روبرو شدن به نظر نمی رسد ویژگی منحصر به فردی داشته باشد تا رمان نویس از آن جهانی تازه خلق کند و حالا به توصیف پایانی خودم به سلطنت کوتاه از سلطنت کوتاه کووید 19 می پردازم شروع سلطنت کوتاه کووید 19 هم همه ما را به خانه ها به قارها و به خلوتگاه ها تبعید کرد این تبعید ناخواسته باعث شد تا عده زیادی بپندارند که اگرچه بسیاری از اشتغالات جهانیان دچار خبط و خطا و سنگینی شده است فرصت برای نویسندگان به بهترین شکل فراهم آمده باشد تا آنها بهترین کارهای خود را خلق کنند نویسنده همواره دنبال چنین خلوتی بود اما آیا چنین آثاری در دو سلطنت کوتاه کووید 19 هم نوشته شد به گمان من خیر نویسنده در پارادوکس زندگی می کند در یک نقیب نما نویسنده از جهتی مجبور است تا در آرام ترین شرایط ممکن و در مخوف ترین قار تنهایی زندگی کند تا فرصتی برای نوشتن داشته باشد اما سوی دیگر قصه این است که او تا در معرض امواج اجتماع نباشد هرگز نخواهد توانست حتی کلمه ای به روی کاغذ ثبت کند ملال عمومی سلطنت کوتاه کووید 19 هم باعث شد تا نویسنده اگرچه به قسمت اول پارادوکس خود رسیده باشد یعنی رفتن به قار تنهایی اما دور شدن او از امواج اجتماعی و فراگیری ملال اجتماعی به او فرصت ثبت کلمات بر کاغذ را نداد بنابراین سلطنت کوتاه کووید 19 هم جز به سلطنت هایی است که در عرصه اجتماعیات ما به آن به عنوان سلطنت های ابتر یاد می کنیم سلطنت هایی که نه از کسی زاده شده اند و نه کسی را می زاده Hello everyone, here it is Claudia Piccino from Italy I want to thank uh, my friend Anja Stelia and Lydia Kerelli who invited me to attend this uh, great uh, festival of Adligat uh, Cooperation, uh, Adligat Association. Uh, I'm a poet and uh, I published lots of poetry books in Italy and also three books in Serbian language that translated for me Lazar Mercur, Makur and also Biliana Bilianowska and they are published with Alma uh, Publishing House in Belgrade. Uh, I want to read you one of my poem uh, in Italian language and uh, it is published in my last book, bilingual book, Spanish Italian that uh, you can see now and that I published in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'll read for you uh, Non è un addio, a poem which I dedicated to little Jack, a little uh, kid uh, who died with cancer and um, he died at 11 years but I think he is still uh, with us as an angel. So, vi leggo in italiano Non è un addio. Un giorno ti spuntarono le ali e sorvolasti cauto monti e valli. Ora hai un lumicino sulla fronte per rischiarare grotte e bui anfratti. Presto avrai un tocco trasparente per scaldare ai tuoi cari cuore e mente. 
non è un addio. Ritornerai. Sarai la foglia che diventa humus per alimentare le radici. Sarai la goccia che si fa vapore e si condensa altrove. Sarai il canto dell'usignolo che allieterà l'altrui vecchiaia. Sarai passo di corsa nell'infinito, bussola di coraggio per l'incontro pattuito. Bene, buona poesia a tutti, tanti cari saluti dall'Italia e grazie per la partecipazione. Cari Okakomo, Hitotsu, Hitotsu, Utaga, Ixano Yoni, Shizumatte Iki, Hidakareta Tobirakara, Yuyami Gao Shiose, Tomosareta Hikari O, Kodomo Tachi Wa Kakomi, Nani Kao Inori Yoni, Watashi Wa Nishirami Chikara Ni Sukuare Teita, Natsukusa Ga Kaori Tachi, Subete Wa Yume No Ato No Yoni, すべては雨上がりの後のよう。ある その魂の名前となって良き言葉として震える母の地武草を温め樹木に宿る生徒なり毛玉の道を生き急ぐ父の凍えた耳に古い歌を返すため皆そこの暗い国から幼い子供が帰ってくる Hello everyone, I'm Justin and I'm from China and uh, first of all, thank you very much for my dearest sister Anna um, for her kindly invite um, to me for this meaningful event and thank you very much too um, to the Association of Writers of Siberia and Society for Culture and uh, what my poem's name is death is merely a piece um and uh, i will recite it first okay now i will read it death is merely a piece by james Tien. as small as a seed and thin like a tree Maybe one day, the last day, perhaps some days, I will vanish. Like a star full of hope, like a river never empty. What the choice of my feet? And I don't want to be that Paris. Yearning for more dreams. Ignore the stuff and switches. Disappeared just like appearing again tomorrow. Death is merely a piece. Yes, and uh, thank you very much again to you all. Best wishes for all the people in the circle of the literature all over the world because we are families and uh, I believe that we will love each other forever and our friendships will be endless. This is my brief. And uh, what my thinkings or what my idea of the writing is just uh, to describe my soul, describe my life in my pain, in my hand, and in my absolutely truth. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye. Marhaba. My name is Jennifer Saliba, and I'm a poet from Lebanon. I published my first book in 2007, Khawater Ta'iha, or Lost Souls. After that, I've published many articles about love, women, coaching, and intimacy in different magazines, as I'm an intimacy coach and author too. To all my fellow writers and poets out there, 
may you have the wisdom and the courage to use your words and the imagination to color them. To the society, a big thank you for the opportunity. May we uh, meet next time and gather face to face and live. I will read now a small poem I wrote called Today Only. اليوم فقط أحبني اليوم فقط للحظات لبرهات لثوان أحبني اليوم فقط بلا أرقام بلا عنوان أحبني الآن قبل فوات الأوان أحبني اليوم فأمس وهما قد سقط وغدو غد سرابا قد لا يأتي قط وليسمل القمر من شفاهنا ويصيب العمر داء النسيان ليغار الكون من رفاهنا ويسل الوعد أنه يوما خان عصور عصور أبحس عن عشق بلا زمان كتمرد الوتر على الكمان وعصيان الروح للكيان عطش لا ترويه إلا مياهنا وله بلا قيود بلا عقود بلا حرمان شغف يسخر بالأعراف يهزأ بالأديان لا عذر له خلق ليدان طوق لا بعد له إلا طوفان حب كل ما يكفيه ذكرى أنه يوما كان Note on the early history of the Maldives Even though Mrs. Nassima writes stories as well For this event section from an essay about early Maldives history And history of Maldives language has been chosen so that readers can be introduced to little-known facts about this amazing island nation. Very little is known of the history of the Maldives, but when we examine the legends and the tangible evidence of the past, we know that this is an old nation. According to an old legend from a southern atoll of Maldives, these islands have been populated for well over 2,500 years. This legend was written down in Arabic by Alama Ahmad Shihabuddin or Alama Shihab al Din of Midu in Edu Atoll, who lived in the 17th century during the reign of Sultan Ibrahim Iskandar I. Alama Shihabuddin's book was called Kitab Fi Atar Midu al Kadima or On the Ancient Ruins of Midu. The storytellers remarkably with no South Asian history ever mentioning the great Indian ruler, Emperor Asoka. It also corroborates some of the information written in old Maldivian documents and in the copper plates known as Loma Vanu. The story of the heritage of Maldives is told in legends from the past. In fact, recorded and old copper plates in ancient scripts carved on coral artifacts and echoed in language, traditions, and the different ethnicities of the people. Language and Scripts The Maldivian language known as Devehi is an Indo-European language which its roots in Sanskrit. A close relative of Devehi is the Sinhalese language spoken in Sri Lanka. Linguists who have researched the Vehi believe that these two languages have a common mother language which may or may not be in existence at the present time. This language now called proto Vehi Sinhala was brought to the Maldives and became the vehic vehicular idiom of a diverse population. The Vehi is believed to have as an independent language by the 1st century BC or 1st century AD. The philologist De Silva says that the Vehi shows Indic features which are older than the 10th century AD and the elements belonging to several pre-10th century strata are discernible. The language also shows more Javidian influence. 
The names of many islands are of Dravidian origin, as are the most of the Devahi terms relating to fishing and severing. The oldest writing in Maldives is possibly the inscription discovered recently on a coral stone from an ancient monastery site in Landu. This inscription is written in a script resembling some South Indian scripts of the 6th to 8th centuries, and it's older than Avela Akuru, hitherto recorded as the oldest Maldivian script. The earliest instances of Avela Akuru are found on images of Vajrayana Buddhism and artifacts which are datable from the 9th to 10th century AD. A Vela Akuru found on the Lomavanu copper plates in from the 12th to 13th century AD. This script developed into Deves Akuru in later centuries. The earliest example of which is from copper plates dating in 1356 AD. Divs Akuru was used in Maldives until the late 18th century when it was superseded by the Thana script which is in use today. A Sanskrit inscription of the Vajrayana Buddhist datable to the 9th century AD, was found in an island in Eri Atoll. This inscription is in the Nagari alphabet and is the oldest such inscription found so far. The script is also found in some passages of the Lomavanu copper plates. Maldives has a history that goes back more than 2,500 years. The legends and oral traditions as well as the old historical sites are evidence of the history. There are few available sources of information about the ancient history of Maldives and a much more research is necessary to gain a fuller picture of her centuries-old heritage. Although small in population and hitherto little town, the Maldives heritage is a unique part of the South Asian region's history. Mudah. Kita sebagai penulis ni kita ada tanggung jawab kita. Kita kena sentiasa memastikan fakta-fakta yang ditulis itu tepat. Apatah lagi mesej-mesej yang disampaikan itu perlu berkualiti dan dapat mengubah cara seseorang itu berfikir kepada yang lebih baik. Saya beranggapan bahawa penulis ini boleh dikatakan seperti seorang tentera yang boleh menyelamatkan negara dan bangsanya. Kalau kita salah menggunakan penulisan, maka penulisan itu boleh menghancurkan sesebuah tamadun. Maka oleh itu, kita sebagai penulis, kita harus ambil tanggungjawab ini. Saya juga uh, uh, mengucapkan jutaan terima kasih kepada pihak Adeligat Serbia kerana menjemput bersama-sama dalam program yang seperti ini uh, bersama rakan-rakan penulis di seluruh dunia. Saya berharap agar program ini dapat menggabungkan semua penulis-penulis di seluruh dunia dan berbincang untuk melakukan sesuatu yang lebih luas, yang lebih baik supaya seluruh masyarakat dunia mendapat uh, apa ni mesej-mesej dan uh, pesanan kita. Jadi saya uh, mengucapkan uh, selamat maju jaya kepada anda semua. Terima kasih. Salut à tous, je me nomme Sitan Sousmano, je suis écrivaine, auteure, infirmière, obstétricienne, étudiante en licence sage-femme. J'envoie les salutations du Mali à tous les écrivains qui participent à cet événement, ainsi qu'à tous les écrivains de la Serbie. Je vais vous lire un de mes textes intitulé « Ma pauvreté ». Je suis pauvre, je suis pauvre, gens du monde, je suis une femme pauvre. Mon continent est appelé « Afrique » ou encore terre de Thomas Sankara. Afrique des hommes noirs, Afrique noire des hommes justes, Afrique noire des hommes injustes. Je suis pauvre, pauvre dans un continent riche, pauvre dans un continent d'or. Si mon continent est riche, pourquoi suis-je pauvre Je le suis, car je n'ai pas de bons dirigeants. 
ils sont désunis. Je suis pauvre car chacun de mes dirigeants ne pense qu'à leur propre pays. Ils pensent à leur pays et oublient le pays voisin, puis disent qu'ils se soucient de l'Afrique. Pourquoi les dirigeants nantis nest il pas leurs autres frères à se développer Pourquoi les pays non développés ne prennent-ils pas l'exemple sur les pays développés Mes dirigeants d'hier sont différents de ceux d'aujourd'hui. Ceux d'hier se sont battus pour faire fleurir la richesse de ma terre noire afin de faire d'elle la plus enviée du monde. Ceux d'aujourd'hui ne pensent qu'à vendre mon sous-sol et à remplir leur poche. Je vous Hi. I am Irene Zamit and I come from Malta and I am very happy to be participating in this project and to be sharing with you my poetry. I am artist, writer and uh, poet. Through my art I like to express uh, the female uh, f figure and the female aspect of us bring, and through my poems I seek to express my feelings as inspired or influenced by what I see around me. I hope that you are doing well, particularly in this, this moment where uh, through this last year and a half we had to change our lifestyle and adapt to new versions of life because of the pandemic. Fortunately for us creators, we continue to create and uh, be inspired and moving on and trying to influence the world with with our writing and art which instilled hope and new life to to those who needed it so we are the frontliners and we have survived uh, the poem which i'm going to read to you is with the title tiny red dress of release and it speaks about the ending of the pandemic, the dream, um, the happiness, and whatever, um, whatever we do when when we finish with this this pandemic. Tonight, I'm going to to wear a red dress to celebrate. I put big earrings, red lipstick, black coal eyeliner, to dance again the tango with you. Because I remember our last dance of that night when we looked from the window, we dreamt of a future. It was shattered by a black virus, a pandemic, the tango of death. And we closed our eyes to find that we are still here, that it's over. Tonight, I wear the same dress because I am free from the grip of Corona. Do not sleep tonight. The night is getting clear. Let's dance tango and drink. We are free. Hello. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ngozi Osoha from Nigeria. I have a poem for you titled The African Girl. My flat soles don't flatten my soul. At least I am five feet nine. My casual wears don't commonize my person. Sure, I am one worldwide. My small breasts don't bottle my mind. I am a phenomenon. Yeah, my rough face tell gorgeous a fortune. See my unkept hair wave loudly glory. Yeah, my short nails call the words to order. See my black eyes, so glitter, like gold. Hear yeah, my quick nose, great dazzling diamonds. See my long legs, step proudly and thorns. This African girl, oh, nature is you. I need no knife to boost my beauty. Need I no chemical to change my skin. Hey, see how cosmetics flatter me. But what? My bombs rock and roll in harmony. Feel my straight arms flagging wonders untold, and my big ears spread wide apart. This African girl, oh, nature is you. Of nipples that are pointers, we rub. Of breasts that are compasses, we guard. We neither ensnare nor anyone enslave. 
because if nudity was a calling, we would have been endangered. I am slim, a model by nature, a perfect act of divinity. But if I got chubby in the future, still wait for it, my other city. The orchestra is me, the melody is me. I am the chemistry undiluted. I am the gallery unadulterated. The exhibition is me, black and blunt. You are the content and the container. You are contented and concentrated. You are the context and the quest. You are so pure and so raw. Oh, the African girl. Don't feel inferior. Dance past the exterior. Draw from within and decorate your interior. Fly high above. Nature abounds in you. Phenomenal girl, the goddess of beauty. Cameras take pride. Mirrors are corrupt, shadows are dark, echoes distort. Yet I have a dream, a dream so clear that someday the paparazzi shall arise with courage and effrontery to witness my beauty. This girl shall set cameras ablaze and burn mirrors into ashes. Piercings are fierce, so they hurt me. Stories could be written, not just tattoos. Scars could be stars, even taboos. So, dear African girl, nature is you. If nudity was a calling, I would intimidate Adam. If nudity was a calling, I would rubbish A principality, a power, a force, a creator. Samir Borroso from Portugal. I'm very honored to be invited to the festival Woods Across Continents and I'd like to uh, congratulate and, and greet the president of um, the Society Oblitat, uh, Victor La Lasley. I hope I'm pronouncing well. <laughs> And uh, I greet from the bottom of my heart all the organizing committee and the Association of Writers of Serbia and Society of Culture, um, Art and International Cooperation, Obligat, Book and Travel Museum um, of Serbian Literature. And um, I think we have a wonderful opportunity to change uh, our poetic experiences um, in a time of disruption that is I think uh, when we, we we realize the importance of poetry poetry is necessary when we are sad when we are down when we have to connect with the universe in search of a the eternal beauty, the true, and the the true of ourselves and of, of our being. Um, I think um, my poetry was born out of a very uh, disruptive experience, the death of my brother, when he was a uh, twenty. 25 years old uh, from a crash plane. It was um, an experience of which I have never recovered and that is at the center of my poetic being. So therefore uh, I'm going to read a poem uh, in which I evoke him uh, and I think we'll 
he has given me strength to go ahead and to 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 to, to go ahead with life and I started to write after his death and so I think uh, sometimes with bad experiences we find a strength to to other ways of looking at ourselves and the world so the poem the title is Blue Violins An angel carries me through the wild endless world his wings touch the open darkness his fingers move his human breath is still alive and I go down into the deepest scars of my face that's where he lives in bright moon nights I feel him living once we played in a bright sunny house he was with me as a golden star in a dark sky he was my twin I will never mourn him enough now childhood is gone the home is closed and dead birds come they fill the house while blue violins play endless midnight songs in September looms sweet scented gardenias and clothes of May. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm longing to meet you at the festival. Yak darakhti khushko tanhayam dar sari kuyi visali o intizari sub hastam az jamali o vasli o in qadar duri dur hajri o in qadar be tadbir naudahayam bad meruban ba umedi rahmat o tadbir از تنی بیچاره حال من نخلی دیگر باز می سبزد با امیدی وصل بی امسال پیش پایش باز می رقصد از وجود عشق پرتغیان نو نهالی تازه می روید با صبوری نوری وصلش را مثل من مستانه می جوید باز می رقصد بسوی نور با امیدی لحظه دیدار انتهایم ابتدای اوست ابتدای عشق ناتکرار بوی مگسلا کن لسپرانسا دی ور تو روسترو جو کمو ان ارگول می سکه te abrazo con deseo divino, esperando el amanecer, y me sequé. La esencia de Dios es lejana, grande y profunda. Acaricio las ramas con el viento, acaricio y miro, me sequé. Creo que el tallo surge de las raíces secas, como la esperanza es la alegría de la vida, pero ahora me estoy secando. La paciencia me embriaga de, y de felicidad el cielo está cubierto con el oro del amanecer. Un árbol joven susurra con sus ramas, baila, miro y me sequé. Hello everyone, I am Shema Ben Shabe, a Tunisian writer. I'm happy to participate to the international meeting of writers. And uh, I would like here to share with you one of my poems from my poetry book, Le Soleil Se Lève Toujours en Orient. Here it is. My poem is entitled Gelbe. Que par une nuit profondément noire, au ciel magnifiquement étoilé, Gelbe, en silhouette d'ombre penchée à sa fenêtre grande ouverte, Nette, honnête, calme, 
soyeuse et sentant la forêt dense, le froid, l'effroi, les premiers temps sur terre, le parfum de mer, la perle rare, le grand bal ce soir, elle. Chère demoiselle, bonsoir. La demoiselle sourire puis s'esquiver, la suivre des yeux toute la soirée. Minuit sonnant, la belle s'échappait, sa chaussure oubliée, le prince charmant la rattraper depuis la porte, lui parler, lui donner rendez-vous vite puis le chasser. Demain, jouer tous les tours pour toucher peut-être, sentir de près au moins sa peau vouloure, entrer dans son boudoir rouge et noir, en sang ses brouillards. Vertige, ne plus rien voir, qu'elle. Qu'est-ce que tu fais là Le revoilà congédié à peine arrivé, la revoir peut-être demain. 22h30, l'été, il vient. Sur sa terrasse, lila, uni blanc et jasmin. Le temps est fragrance, éther et transparence. Et vers très tard, toujours au revoir. Rendez-vous demain soir. Bonsoir, c'est moi. Ouvre vite, il fait froid. 19h30, l'hiver est bien droit, du coiffeur, bien rasé, frais, parfumé. Elle a préparé à dîner. En entrée, fricassé des crevisses à la vinaigrette de miel de la vente et poêlé de cèpe en tulipe craquelée aux amandes. Puis je l'ai d'huître en chaud froid de petits pois et voilà pour le gourmet. Ça vous va Pendant qu'elle parlait, il remarquait petite parure, rubis, grande allure, tout de noir vêtu que le décolleté qui dévoilait au gré des gestes, qui dévoile au gré des gestes un léger nu. Joli, joli. Mais il joue sans blaser, fait semblant de ne pas la regarder. Elle poursuit. Elle lui verse en apéro du Glenfiddich à boire. S'approchait ainsi de lui, tout près, tout près. Encore un doigt du décolleté. Et la table est renversée. Ainsi donc leur échappait. Ainsi il s'aimait. Que par une nuit profondément noire, galbait, etc., etc. Elle attendait. Est-il vrai que dans l'embrasure de la fenêtre, on voit maintenant sa silhouette se retourner, s'engouffrer dans le noir, s'en aller, le fil du galbé fin, net, honnête, s'effriter lentement, s'effiler, la silhouette s'éloigner, s'effacer, s'évanouir complètement, mourir, quitter. Est-il vrai que vers l'intérieur, le lieu est sombre et fermé Est-il vrai que sa démarche en s'éloignant était mesurée, fière, sereine, certaine, mais qu'un rien, un souffle, un soupir, la ferait défaillir. Est-il vrai Qu'à son passage, pendant qu'elle disparaissait, une lumière a scintillé, une étoile de, du ciel tombée là, à ses pieds, de tristesse pour elle, effondrée Non, seulement une larme de ses yeux échappée et très vite balayée. Est-il vrai Que du noir dans le noir, on sent maintenant une ombre s'approcher, un pas ralentir, l'ombre la frôler, le tout s'arrêter, se figer, ne plus respirer. Apnée, puis refrôlement, un frémissement, deux, et alors défaillance. Que oui, c'est bien lui, il est là, là, maintenant. Que maintenant il la tient, c'est bien lui. Dans ses bras, oui, il la retient là, longtemps. Puis sa main sur son visage, ses cheveux, son visage. Puis ses doigts sur ses yeux, chasser les larmes. Sur ses lèvres, l'empêcher de parler, la prier en silence, de retourner là-bas. Patienter encore un temps à sa fenêtre, là-bas. Il ne saurait plus tarder. Bientôt, très bientôt, il reviendrait. Est-il vrai Hi, I'm Mia Byrne, and I am a poet and songwriter from New York City and San Francisco. This is a song slash poem about the California wildfires. It's called Dry Lightning. Mm -hmm. A new wind crosses the desert, gathering dust in clouds, heats rising in the valleys, dry lightning's coming down. No rain, no Savior's tears, no doves with an olive branch crown. But God has wrought from what man made, dry lightning's coming down. 
Little wooden buildings burn, no ivory towers in these towns. Some hue and cry to hold the line, dry lightning's coming down. No signs, no hands divine, this hell is earthly bound. No way to outrun it, dry lightning's coming down. I wonder what heaven is like today, till the angels cry out loud. To seraphim wish their weeping might quench the burning ground, while hurricanes of fire are writhing round and round. What God has wrought from what man made, dry lightning's coming down. No rain, no Savior's tears, no way to put it out. What God has wrought from what man made, dry lightning's coming down. Dry lightning's coming down. Thank you. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed uh, the reading of poetry and prose from uh, across five continents. Uh, but for sure, we hope that uh, in next events, there will be even more poets and writers, more continents, more countries, more nations across the globe participating in this event. And for sure, I hope to see you all in Belgrade one day.